Sarah, and this is Budget Sew, where we create stylish, fashionable looks as inexpensively as possible. Today, we're going to be talking all about sewing patterns. More specifically, I'm going to do the pattern tag by Whitney Sews, as suggested to me by one of my subscribers. But first, I'm going to show you one of my makes. Today, I'm wearing Simplicity 6082 in a size 16. I bought this stunning vintage pattern from Good Value Thrift Store in downtown London, Ontario for $2. It was published in 1973 and is a jiffy knit dress in two lengths. This flare dress is sized for stretch knits only and has a low round neckline, a back zipper and top stitching trim. The short dress has long set in sleeves and an approximate dress length of 36 inches. The long dress has short set-in sleeves. I chose to make my dress with the longer sleeves and lower calf length rather than the ankle length. I didn't add a back zipper since it's a knit dress. This lovely fabric came from the clearance section at Fabricland for $4.25 a meter. It's a wonderful knit polyester with various shades of green, blue, and white flowers on a black background. It's soft and smooth and comfortable to wear. Since it's 100% polyester, it's a great wash and wear fabric. To complete the look, I'm wearing Joey New York high heels that I bought at Value Village thrift stores and the Hugh brand pantyhose are from the Hudson's Bay Company. I bought the quilted leather purse from the Salvation Army charity store and the earrings were in a Ziploc bag full of jewelry that I bought for $5 at a church Christmas bazaar. Now onto the pattern tag. Some of you may be wondering, what is a pattern tag? The pattern tag is about answering questions about your sewing pattern stash. Now these questions came directly from Whitney Sew's video, which I'll link in the description box below. The first question was, how many sewing patterns do I own? I had no idea, so I counted them. I have approximately 200 sewing patterns. Honestly, I had a lot more. I mean a lot more but I stopped sewing for almost 10 years and got rid of most of my patterns, all of my fabric, one of my vintage sewing machines, and all my Berta style magazines. Berta magazines are much harder to come by now where I live in Canada, so I don't get a new one every month. The two places where I used to buy them no longer sell them. Where do you buy your Berta style magazines? Do you buy them online? Let me know in the comments section. Some of the patterns I got rid of were gorgeous vintage ones that made up beautifully. I hope I can find them again at thrift stores. I have high hopes. On the positive side, everything was donated, so I'm glad that it got a second or even third life. I'm slowly rebuilding my sewing collection, including my pattern and fabric cord. My partner Brad bought me a vintage domestic brand sewing machine that he found on Facebook Marketplace. When he bought it, the person said that it worked, but it didn't. The stitch length would not change from the tiniest length. I watched numerous YouTube videos on how to fix this problem, but none of them were the actual problem I was experiencing. I decided to oil and clean the machine to ensure that nothing else was damaged while my brain tried to sort out this problem. It turned out that the stitch length became stuck because the gear needed oil. After I worked the oil through the gears, the indicator released and now my sewing machine purrs like a kitten. My patterns are stored in heavy duty cardboard boxes with metal corners and handles. 
I found these beautiful printed boxes at HomeSense about 15 years ago and I love them. I bought two sets of three, but I didn't have a purpose in mind when I bought them. When I got them home, I knew the larger four boxes would be perfect for patterns. The smaller two hold travel mementos from England, Scotland, and across Canada. One large box holds Vogue patterns, including the larger size designer patterns. The other box contains Simplicity patterns Quick Sew and some other large size patterns like Stretch and Sew. One medium sized box contains McCall's patterns and the other medium sized box contains my Berta, Butterick, New Look and Advance patterns. I organize my patterns in numerical order by company. Most people don't think this is ideal, but I like it. I like that when I buy the patterns with the same number, but with different years, that they're in the same box together. For example, I have Vogue 1643 from 1994 and 2019. Both are jacket patterns, but the newer version also includes a gorgeous pleated skirt that I'm dying to make up. I bought the older Vogue pattern from Good Value Thrift Store and the newer Vogue pattern online from the McCall's Pattern website. I bought it before the switch over to the new site called somethingdelightful.com here in Canada. My oldest pattern is Advance 8029 from 1956. I bought this pattern from Value Village Thrift Stores in a bag of three other patterns for $1.99. These are scoop neck jumpers and skirts, both slim and flared. Jumper one has a flared skirt and soft unpressed pleats in both the front and the back. View two is a front button flared skirt. View three is a sheath jumper with soft waistline darts and low walking pleat at the back. And view four is a slim skirt. The stitched edges add a tailored look. The suggested fabrics are cotton, novelty cotton, linen, silk or synthetic veil, taffeta, rayon flannel, rayon gabardine, and wool. I bought this pattern in a vintage size 16, so in modern sizing, it's actually a size 12. So I will have to upsize it about two sizes to make it a modern 16 in order to use it. I know the pattern looks like it's in rough shape because the pattern envelope is wrapped in tape, but the actual pattern inside is in excellent condition. My newest pattern isn't the most recently published pattern in my collection, but rather my most recently acquired pattern. It's McCall 7853, published in 2018. It's close fitting skirts and pants with elastic waists and length variations. Both skirts have side slits. View C's pants are slightly flared and above the ankle, while View D's pants are full length flares. My mom bought this pattern for herself and I loved it so much that she traced my size and surprised me with a copy of the pattern. The recommended fabrics are two-way stretch knits, such as stretch velvet, cotton knits, interlock, and pont knit. I'm really looking forward to making up View D, the longer flared pants. I'll be able to dress up or down this pattern based on the fabric I choose while still being comfortable with the elastic waist. My favorite pattern besides my Vintage McCall's 5136, which belonged to my Nana, is another vintage pattern. McCall's 7662, published in 1964. My Nana owned a copy of this pattern too, and she gave it to my mom. I bought my copy of the pattern at Good Value Thrift Stores in downtown London, Ontario for $2. McCall's 7662 is a lightly fitted and flared dress that is a choice of two necklines and two sleeve lengths, or it may be sleeveless. This dress has French darts at the front back darts, and a back zipper. The sleeveless dress and dress with three quarter length sleeves have patch pockets, and this dress may be lined. The suggested fabrics are lightweight tweeds, linen, peak, shantung, lightweight flannel, fail, synthetic mixtures, printed silks or cottons, silk or cotton broadcloth, and lightweight wools. This is another pattern that I'm going to enlarge. This pattern is in a teen size 1416. I didn't realize it was a teen size when I bought the pattern, but I'm glad I did. The teen size has a shorter finished length, 
from the back of the regular neckline to the waist, about an inch of difference. This works out well for me because I'm short-waisted, but I'll still need to enlarge this pattern from a vintage size 16 to a modern size 16. Before I continue with the pattern tag, please share this video with your friends and family. I'd love to help others sew and upcycle on a budget and troubleshoot their favorite patterns. I also love sharing the treasures that I find at thrift shops. If you'd like to see more from Budget Sew, please subscribe and make sure that the bell is on so you receive a notification when I release a new video. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Budget Sew. Now, back to the patterns! My most used pattern is Vogue 1051. You may remember these pants from my vintage pattern haul where I paired it with Vogue Top 7871. The link to that pattern haul is at the top of the screen. I also made these pants up years ago to wear on a trip to England and Scotland. They're super comfortable. This is an Alice and Olivia Vogue American Designer pant pattern that was published in 2008. I bought this pattern in a Vogue sewing pattern sale from Fabricland, a Canadian fabric retailer. At that time, Fabricland would have specific pattern brands on sale each week. For example, Vogue patterns would be on sale one week and then McCall's the next, and then after that, Berta, and then Simplicity and so on. So almost every time I went into Fabricland, some patterns would be on sale. These pants have slightly flared legs, are semi-fitted through the hip, have a below waistline contour waistband with a fly zipper closing, front and back belt pockets, and back button loops. View A has contrasting belts and loops, and View B has turn back cuffs. The recommended fabrics are gabardine, tropical wool, and lightweight denim, and the contrast should be made from satin. My most recently used pattern is Simplicity 8243. Simplicity 8243 was published in 1998 and is a jumper in three lengths with a back zipper, shoulder straps, and optional top stitching. Jumpers A and B have straight skirts. Jumper A has a back slit with a back tab and button trim. Jumpers C and D are flared. Jumpers A and C have a self-buttoned belt with a removable bag with a flap and Jumper D has an upper patch pocket with a flap. I paid $2 for this uncut factory folded sewing pattern at Value Village thrift stores. You may remember this pattern from my sewing haul video, Start the Car! The link to that video is right here at the top of the screen. I made up Jumper D with the flared skirt, but instead of the upper patch pocket, I made the self-buttoned belt with a removable bag. The only other alteration that I made to this pattern was that I did not include the back zipper because I didn't think it was necessary. The link to the video with the sew along is right here at the top of the screen. My next pattern to use is Simplicity 6110 from 1973. I bought this pattern from Good Value Thrift Stores for $2. This is a blouse, skirt, and pants wardrobe pattern. The blouse has a front button closing and set in sleeves with button fastened turn back cuffs, a notched collar, a front yoke, and an optional purchase belt. The skirt has a back zipper, waistband, and optional top stitched patch pockets. The pants have a front zipper, waistband, and turn back cuffs. The suggested fabrics are lightweight wool, wool flannel, gabardine, double knit, linen, duck, chino, cotton broadcloth, sateen, chambray, chalice, sura, crepe, and silk linen. There's a note on the pattern that says this design has the new narrow shoulders look. The shoulder length of the pattern is shorter and the head of the sleeve is higher. I love that about this pattern. These narrow shoulder patterns suit me very well, so I'm very much looking forward to making this up. I love the wide leg pants and the narrow shoulder blouse, and I think the skirt will drape beautifully. This pattern is in a vintage size 14, so I'll need to enlarge it to a size 16 as well. Let me know in the comment section if you would like to see how I grade my patterns larger. The pattern that didn't work out as planned, but I made it work, is Simplicity Jacket 4183. Simplicity 4183 is an everybody craft coat 
Pants, and Tote Pattern by Patty Reed Designs, published in 2006. The jacket, View A, has long sleeves, pockets, and pleating. The pants have an elastic waist, and the tote is so cute. I bought this pattern for $1.99 from Value Village Thrift Stores. This pattern is size large to double extra large, but my measurements are a medium. I graded the pattern down to a size medium, or so I thought, and sewed it all together, but it was way too big. Rather than give up on the project, I seam ripped the entire jacket and cut the fabric pieces even smaller. After sewing it all back together again, I was worried about how it would look, but it fits and I love it. The link to the video with the completed coat is at the top of the screen. One pattern that I plan to use again is the dress that I'm wearing, Vintage Simplicity 6082, but also Vintage Simplicity 6260. I bought Simplicity 6260 for $2 at Good Value Thrift Stores with a stack of other vintage patterns. This pattern was published in 1974 and is a jiffy knit short front wrap dress sized for stretch knits only. This front wrap dress has drop shoulders and features a V-shaped neckline and self-tie ends. View 1 has tri-colored braid and view two has top stitching trim. The suggested fabrics are stretchable jersey knits of polyester, cotton, rayon, or acetate, such as matte jersey or tricot. Stretchable double knits of polyester, cotton, or wool are also recommended. I lengthened the skirt of the dress by seven inches so that it fell below the knee and used two gorgeous knit fabrics for a designer look. The link to the video with the finished dress is right here at the top of the screen. The next pattern that I'm going to show you is the one that I own the most copies of. For me, that would be McCall's 8705, published in 1996. These are great bags to carry it all. Totes, backpacks, a sling bag, a new take on the messenger bag, and a shoulder bag. My favorite is View D. It's not that I own more than one of this pattern, but rather I bought my first copy at Value Village and didn't realize that there were no pattern pieces inside the envelope until I got home. I was so disappointed, but lucky for me, I found this pattern again a few months later at a different Value Village with all the pattern pieces inside the envelope. At this point in my life, I haven't accidentally bought the same pattern more than once but I can see it happening to me, especially now that the big pattern companies are republishing their patterns under different numbers and even different companies. I've seen some sad faces on the McCall's and Simplicity group on Facebook because they've bought the same pattern, but with different artwork. The rarest pattern that I have, and I think it's a rare pattern, is Sew so Knit and Stretch 207. This is a ladies panties pattern with flared legs designed by Kirsten Martinson published in 1969. I bought this pattern for $1.99 from Valley Village Thrift Stores. This pattern has two pattern pieces and a guide with recommended sewing procedures. For example, it suggests when sewing nylon, we recommend a synthetic thread, such as our spun, syntet, or nylon. Thread tension should be normal or balanced and use normal pressure on the pressure foot. I have a few more patterns that I think are rare, but they're embroidery transfers. The first one is Simplicity 7141, cross stitch animal motifs from the 1940s. So remember earlier when I mentioned that I organized my patterns in numerical order? Well, when I pulled out this pattern, I also pulled out this pattern. They're both Simplicity 7141, but this one is a Jiffy nightgown pattern from 1967. The 1940s pattern includes tiny cross-stitch animals that make sweet trims on children's rompers, aprons, pinafores, bibs, overalls, and dresses. This envelope contains one transfer sheet of 36 embroidery motifs, two each of 18, approximately two and a quarter by two inches, and a color chart guide. Inside, there are elephants, birds, deer, cats, dogs, rabbits, squirrels, pigs, sheep, roosters, baby chicks, horses, and ducks. I bought this pattern in a bag of two patterns with McCall's 1426. 
McCall's 1426 was published in 1948 and is a comograph transfer of playtime motifs in banding and cross stitch. This pattern contains motifs and borders one inch high in 10 crosses to the inch for trimming children's dresses, sunsuits, and more. The matching train and elephant motifs are one and five eighths of an inch high and crosses six to the inch for curtains, cushions, and more. I bought McCall's 1426 and Simplicity 7141 for $2 in a bag at Good Value Thrift Stores. One more comograph pattern that I have is McCall's 1537, published in 1950. This transfer is for all over smocking darts, a quarter of an inch apart, and shown in the actual size below, right here. The pattern includes two transfer sheets, each 11 by 36 inches, and are adaptable to different widths and various types of smocking. View A shows honeycomb smocking, views B and C are cable and wave, and views D and E are Van Dyke. I bought this pattern at the same time as the other two transfer patterns at Good Value Thrift Stores for $2. The strangest pattern that I own is McCall's 6615. This is a fashion accessories pattern that was published in 2012. I bought this pattern from Value Village Thrift Stores for $1.99. This is a footwear toppers pattern, like spats. There are many different views with this pattern, so a lot of variation, so that means a lot of different looks. I'd like to make up this pattern at the same time as I make up a jacket or coat pattern, so I have a coordinated look. My pattern that is in the worst condition is McCall's 5136. It was published in 1959, and is a box jacket in two lengths, a slim three-gore skirt, and a cap sleeve, tuck-in, or over-blouse. The jacket has set in three-quarter length sleeves. The neck, fronts, lower edge, and sleeves of the longer jacket are bound with military braid, the shorter jacket with bias cell fabric. The longer jacket is lined. The blouse has a wide neck, left side zipper, and vents in the front dart seams of the overblouse. The dart fitted skirt has a low back pleat and a left side zipper. I've shown this pattern before a few times in my videos, the first being my very first video, how to draw a kick pleat. The link to that video is right here at the top of the screen. Or you may remember it from my sew along to the skirt with the kick pleat, the link to that video is right here at the top of the screen. Or finally, you may remember it from the sew along where I sewed the matching box jacket. The link to that sew along is right here at the top of the screen. I'm very concerned about the condition of this pattern because the pattern pieces, as well as the easy sewing guide and instructions, are beginning to disintegrate. I think it would be best to trace the pattern onto tissue paper before using it again and the instructions should be copied on a scanner or printed to prevent further deterioration. What are your thoughts on this old pattern? What have others done with their vintage patterns? Please let me know in the comments section below. I bought my very first pattern, New Look 6838, from Walmart, way back when they used to sell patterns, fabric, and sewing supplies in Canada. This pattern was a learning experience for me. New Look 6838's top has a boat neckline, but because I have narrow shoulders, it just kept slipping. I ended up cutting a five inch wide triangle out of the back of the neck and tapering it down so that it would fit correctly. I remember when I first started sewing, my mom took me to Lens Mill Store in London, Ontario, where I bought a huge stack of Simplicity patterns, including Simplicity 7178. I made up this top twice once out of a red fabric printed with gold details, and the other out of a green and white 70s style print fabric. Nowadays, Lens Mill sells only McCall's and Quick Sew patterns, but their fabric selection is outstanding. I buy new patterns from Fabricland, usually from the discard bin because they're marked down in price. Fabricland sells Berta Style, McCall's, Butterick, and Vogue patterns only. I also buy patterns online from SomethingDelightful.com, which sells McCall's, Butterick, Vogue, and Quick Sew patterns, 
or from Amazon.ca, which sells simplicity and new look patterns. Amazon.ca is the only place I know where I can buy simplicity or new look patterns in Canada. I buy my secondhand patterns in stores like Valley Village Thrift Stores, or the Salvation Army Charity Store, Mission Thrift Store, Optimist Thrift Shop, and Good Value Thrift Store. I also look for books that contain sewing patterns. I bought this dressmaking book from the Salvation Army Charity Store for $2. It has free downloadable patterns, which I'll link for you below. I'm curious to know about where you buy your patterns. Do you have any sites online that sell patterns at a great price? Please leave me a note in the comment section below so that I can check it out. I hope you enjoyed the pattern tag. Please like and share this video with your friends and family. And if you'd like to see more from Budget Sew, please subscribe. And if you'd like to stay up to date with Budget Sew, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Budget Sew. Thanks for watching. See you next time.